KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson and the Adahi Itano Program. Cars Plus, drive home in a brand new 2021 Hyundai Palisade equipped with Guam's only lifetime powertrain limited warranty. Call 477-7807 or visit carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Starting now on Prime Time, another day of first dose vaccinations for Manumko, not just at Ukuru High, but also at the Southern Regional Community Health Center down in Inarahan. Plus, a doctor as part of the Governor's Physicians Advisory Group is now public health's new physician specialist at $268,000 a year. And a bill to make the Guam legislature a part time body has been introduced by Republicans. Nestor Lacanto has that story coming right up. Hoffa day and good evening. I'm Tyler Matanani. Two days down, one more to go. We return to the vaccination clinics where the Department of Public Health carried out the, administ the administration of the Pfizer vaccine for Phase 1A health care workers and 1C ages 60 to 74 and frontline workers. Today's vaccination clinic went much smoother than yesterday's. Many criticized public health's day one process, as hundreds of those in phase 1A and 1C waited in line for hours that stretched for miles, only to be told that there were no more vaccines available. Some were even forced to take drastic measures and use the bathroom in the jungle. And although they were able to refer 150 Phase 1C individuals, many were left more than unsatisfied. Today, day two, DPHSS has taken a much more organized approach to provide the Pfizer vaccine, issuing numbers to the first 250 healthcare workers in their car and 350 ticket numbers to individuals 60 years and older. They even added a second vaccination clinic in the south at the Southern Region Community Center to service the first 200 individuals. DPHSS Public Information Officer Janella Carrera. You know, I apologize to each and every one of them. Um, if that was my mother or my father, I would be upset for them too. So I, yes, absolutely. Um, and, and I apologize to all of those who waited in line and had to be turned away. Um, so we did sit, sit down, we regrouped, we discussed it as an agency. How do we improve this process? How do we ensure that these people um, don't have to suffer th through that um, experience again? This overnight reformed approach allowed public health to conduct a much more organized administration of the vaccine. Along the way, we met this lovely couple, Kim and Parker. They're part of Phase 1C and were here for the second day in a row. Yesterday, they waited in line from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., a total of seven and a half hours. But when they finally got inside the Ukudu gates, they were met by personnel who broke the unfortunate news. They were out of vaccines. You know, we don't want to complain about the process. We know this is very, very difficult. Uh, and it's new to everybody, and who knew that the turnout would be so big, okay? So we can sympathize with everybody, but there are some pretty elementary things that could have happened to make it a little easier. We thought that we were going to get uh, vaccinated by three, and we were also, we heard on the radio that if anybody in line by three o'clock would get vaccinated, well, as it turned out, the, the uh, limit was hit at about 2.30, and so we were, you know, very nice people came and said, we're sorry, uh, you know, tr you can try again tomorrow. Thankfully, their second drive up wasn't in vain. Today, it worked out a lot smoother. Uh, they were handing out numbers in line. And so uh, it, it, we came early, but there was still a big line. Uh, and we were not sure if we were going to get in the count today either. But once we got our numbers, hey, everything else was smooth sailing. Everybody's been very, very nice. You know, no complaints whatsoever. This staff is working very hard and, you know, it makes us proud of the kind of people that we're dealing with here. We followed their journey as husband and wife as they joined the vaccination. Oh, on a, a pain level, one to ten scale, that was about a zero. So if, pe if people have any fear of needles or pain, this, they're not going to get it here. You know, that, that was a, just a little, little stick and it was over. 
His wife, Kim, on the other hand, would disagree. I am nervous, yet yeah, I don't like needles. I really don't, so I, I refuse to look at it. But Kim took it like a champ, and they encouraged everyone to follow suit. I'm so happy that uh, I, I finally gotten my vaccination. I feel just fine. I recommend um, others to, to get vaccinated. Okay, it'll keep themselves and their family safe. Day three of public health's vaccination clinics will proceed tomorrow at Ukudu for the second administration of the Pfizer vaccine to the first 250 health care workers from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., followed by the first 350 individuals in Phase 1C from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. The Southern Region Community Health Center will also carry out vaccinations for Phase 1C tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for the first 200 individuals. Through trial and error and re-strategizing, public health has successfully carried out the second day in their mission to spread the immunity in the community. Public health is seeking alternative locations to post up a temporary vaccination clinic as schools prepare to resume on-campus learning on January 18th. Additionally, D DPHSS will continue to work with village mayors to administer the vaccine to homebound 1B individuals ages 75 years and older, as well as working with approximately 36 of their clinic providers to provide vaccinations. While vaccination efforts continue, with a second dose being administered to those in the Phase 1A group, a first dose of first doses and first doses being administered to Manumco in the Phase 1C category, there are still some folks out there who have some questions they need answered before they join the vaccination. Adeloup Communications Director Crystal Pakwasan Augustin says they're holding a virtual town hall this Sunday to help educate and encourage those eligible to take the vaccine. And it will be happening this Sunday, that's Sunday, January 10 at 5 p.m. So if you have a question you want to ask, uh, you can log in on our Zoom. You can watch it on the governor's Facebook channel. Uh, you can also watch it on TV on PBS Channel 12. Um, we basically want to give the community an opportunity to ask their questions. So Paco San Augustin says the panel will con will the panel members will consist of Dr. Felix Cabrera, Dr. Annette David, Dr. Lewis. Lewis Cruz, Dr. Thane Hancock, as well as Public Health's Annette Uggen. Panelists will be answering questions broken down into five separate sections with questions such as, is the vaccine safe? What are the side effects? And can I get COVID after taking the vaccine? Amongst many other questions. Guam has suffered its 124th COVID-related death after a 52-year-old man that has been admitted to the Guam Regional Medical City passed away at the Dededo facility on Wednesday night just before 8. Offering her sympathies to the man's family, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero wrote, quote, In the words of a great poet, though we weep for your loss, you will dwell in our hearts, safe from the, safe from the storms or darkness. May his memory live on through those who knew him, unquote. As for the latest COVID numbers, the Joint Information Center reports eight new COVID-19 cases out of 463 tests performed on Wednesday. Guam's current coronavirus case count since last March is now 7,386 with 124 deaths, 117 active cases and 7,145 recoveries. There are 12 coronavirus admissions in island hospitals with two patients in ICU and one on ventilators. Guam's CAR score has increased to 1.2. He's a part of the consortium of doctors tapped to be a part of the governor's physicians advisory group. And now he's officially on contract with GovGuam. Documents obtained by KUAM show the Department of Public Health picked up a physician's a physician specialist this week. According to a personnel action form filed with the Department of Administration, Public Health signed an employment contract with Dr. Felix Cabrera. For the next two years, Public Health will be paying him $268,000 a year. According to the documents, Dr. Cabrera cannot work more than 40 hours a week 
a week. He is entitled to all fringe benefits, including retirement, annual, sick, administrative leave, and health insurance. Dr. Cabrera, as we've reported, is responsible for the creation and formula behind the COVID area risk score or CAR score. KUAM has reached out to Public Health for a comment on what Dr. Cabrera's role and responsibilities will entail. We are waiting for a response. Corrupt police officers and public officials. Just a part of the testimony from a confidential informant working undercover for the FBI during the ongoing sentencing hearing for former Zonia Mayor Jesse Blas. Adriana Cotero reports. In a and we will have that story for you in a moment. A 36-year-old man wanted for questioning relative to an aggravated assault into money self-surrendered to the Superior Court of Guam's Marshal Division on Thursday. It was on December 31st that Guam Police Department had issued a wanted flyer seeking Jerome Camacho Cruz. Cruz was arrested for the following, hindering apprehension and warrant of arrest. He was booked and confined at the Department of Corrections. This case has been forwarded to the Office of the Attorney General for Prosecution. The Guam Police Department is seeking the public's assistance in locating 18-year-old Kopich Chutaro, also known as Osama. He is wanted for questioning regarding an aggravated assault complaint in Tamuning. Kopich is considered dangerous and should not be approached. Anyone with information as to his whereabouts is encouraged to call GPD dispatch at 472-8911. Tips can also be submitted anonymously through the Guam Crime Stoppers at guam.crimestoppers.web. A cash reward of up to $1,000 could be paid if the information provides leads to an arrest and a grand jury indictment. And we have the Bloss story right here for you. The final portion of Assistant U.S. Attorney Laura Zambataro's direct examination on confidential informant Brenda Kinian detailed public and police officials' corruption and involvement with drugs on Guam. Zambataro questioned Kinian regarding an uncontrolled meeting that occurred at the doorsteps of her home. Allegedly, a Guam Police Department officer approached Kinian and threatened her. Kinian testified, he told me not to get the mayor in trouble because he is from Guam and I am not from this island. I felt like I was not safe. Kinian immediately reported the January 2019 incident to the feds and they moved her off island. Kinian is currently under FBI protection. Defense counsel Joseph Rosano objected to the testimony, arguing that it should be stricken from the record because it's not related to the offense his client pled guilty to. The government refuted the testimony represents the state of affairs in both Jonia and the entire island, stating, quote, the mayor's power and influence in Jonia, the police are on his side, unquote. The court ultimately sided with the defense. However, the prior controlled phone calls and arrangement meetings between former Jonia Mayor Jesse Bloss and Kinian that were played back were permitted by the court to remain on record. A two-day-long testimony detailed the drug-related bribes Bloss pled guilty to. In September 2019, he was taken into custody for permitting drug trafficking through village mailboxes in exchange for a profit. He pled guilty to one count of extortion and faces a maximum imprisonment term of 20 years. Kinian posed as a drug trafficker from November 2018 to January 2019. The conversations between Bloss and Kinian include discussions regarding the drugs ice, cocaine, and crack to come in from the states in Jotnia mailboxes. On November 18th, 2018, Bloss made an agreement with Kinian, who was undercover for the feds, to have a mailbox in exchange for money. Kinian testified that in one instance, Bloss told her that to open a second mailbox, it would cost $15,000. And in another instance, he told her he won't reopen the mailbox unless she gave him $8,000. Attorney Rosano's cross-examination on Kinian will begin on Tuesday, January 12th at 10.30 a.m. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. Jury selection is underway for murder defendant Joshua Palacios. The government is taking Palacios and defense counsel Tom Fisher to trial in an effort to prove he is guilty for the death of Keith Castro. The incident occurred back in July at a Jigo residence where Castro was allegedly beaten and shot. Palacios is accused for pulling the trigger on Castro right after Thomas Titano struck him multiple times with a metal baton. Titano has since entered an agreement and pled guilty. He is expected to, to testify during Palacios' trial due to COVID-19. Jury selection is occurring at Academy of Our Lady of Guam. 
One day after protesters laid siege to the U.S. Capitol, questions remain about how it could have happened and what happens next. Michael George has more details from Capitol Hill. President Trump has remained behind closed doors today and still hasn't condemned his supporters who stormed the U.S. Capitol Wednesday. CBS News has confirmed that some Trump cabinet officials discussed invoking the 25th Amendment to remove the president two weeks before the inauguration. The most immediate route would be the vice president uh, to recognize the danger of the Donald Trump presidency and, and take this action. A. B. Uh, my members are very much in, interested, as are my phone is exploding with impeach, impeach, impeach. But president must be held accountable. Even allies are blaming the president for stoking the violence. The president needs to understand that his actions were the problem, not the solution. Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao resigned her post, citing Wednesday's violence as the reason for stepping down. While the cleanup continues on Capitol Hill, questions remain about how the protesters could make it into the Capitol in the first place and why police weren't better prepared to handle the planned protests. No one can tell me that if it had been a group of Black Lives Matter protesting yesterday, there wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been treated very, very differently than the mob of thugs that stormed the Capitol. The government is now moving in 6,200 National Guard members and installing seven-foot-tall fences in preparation for the inauguration. These personnel and this security measures will be in place for no less than the next 30 days. The FBI says it's working to identify those involved in Wednesday's rampage. Michael George, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Social distancing may be the new norm, but connection will always be our tradition. Through good times and tough times, we remain connected with you. Mass may be the new fashion, but protection will always be our style. You can always count on us to protect the things that matter the most. Sanitizing may be the new routine, but caring will always be our practice. We care about your loved ones and the things you value the most. And as we welcome our new normal, one thing remains certain, we will always be here for you. We're open and ready to serve you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the island. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come.
KUAM News, winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. And welcome back. An issue with a file sent to the Bank of Guam caused a delay in the release of a number of GovGuam payroll checks today. Department of Administration Director Ed Burns says the Bank of Guam contacted other banks to be on the alert for their transfers so they can so they can credit customer accounts as soon as they could. Separately, DOA's Burns says they have received applications and processed a total of 108 bereavement checks. These are $10,000 payments Governor Liu Leon Guerrero authorized to the family of those who died as a result of COVID-19. DRT and the Department of Administration will be mailing out 1,391 tax refund checks this week, totaling a little over $3.1 million. These include refunds that were garnished to repay GovGuam debts. They are for error-free returns filed on or before, before July 11th of 2020. Should the governor have the sole authority to extend a public health emergency declaration, a bill by Senator Chris Duenas would take it away from the governor and transfer that power to the legislature. Duenas explained his rationale during an appearance today on the link. This is no way, um, you know, uh, uh, casting aspersions on the management in particular. What this is, is an effort to ensure uh, that we have broader communication because while all this was happening, there were voices in the private sector coming from the businesses saying, you know, we have met the requirements that other businesses have met. We have spent millions of dollars uh, mitigating uh, things, uh, you know, within our within our stores, within our restaurants, within our bars. You know, we have we have we think we have reached the same capacity or better than the current businesses that are open. Duenius cites the rise of various business groups who criticized the governor's decisions to delay the reopening of certain industries and government services during the current pandemic. So there's a lot of operational issues in government that I think uh, right now are, question, are under question. And uh, I would like uh, the legislature to have the ability to sit with the governor uh, in the people's house uh, to discuss these issues. Under Duenius's bill, a public health emergency declaration by the governor would automatically terminate after 30 days and can only be extended by the legislature. There's yet another proposal to make the, to make the Guam legislature a part-time body. A group of Republican senators has introduced a bill to place the question before voters in the 2022 general election. They say a part-time body would attract a broader range of candidates who could serve the public with without giving up their full-time jobs. Nestor Lacanto reports. It's dubbed the Citizens Legislative Reform Act of 2021 and is patterned after the part-time legislatures now active in 40 of the 50 states. Co-sponsor, Senator Chris Duenas. This has been tried no less than five times with a bill to be introduced in the legislature for a, for a part-time legislature. Under the bill, senators would meet twice a year in two 30-day sessions. Lawmakers' salaries would be converted to stipends of just $100 a day for each day of session. Sponsors say it would save taxpayers some money, but the bill also creates a legislative service and research bureau to replace central operations. Classified employees would be hired, and unclassified staff or individual senators will also be allowed. Meanwhile, in its findings and intent, the bill also acknowledges past criticism of part-time bodies. It reduces the checks and balances, it limits the access of constituents, and it would be more easily controlled by big business and the wealthy. Duenas acknowledges a lot of discussion will still be needed. Senator Moylan, Senator Brown, Senator Ada, and myself, you know, came to the conclusion that it may be time to pass this along and have a referendum. And we and, and the thing is, is don't do that, you know, eight months before an election uh, where it's disruptive and can come across as being political. Do it day one so that we can have a two year conversation about this issue and um, give the people an opportunity to to express their views. The last major change in the makeup of the legislative body came in 1996. That's when the number of senators was reduced from the 21 members authorized by the Organic Act to the current 15. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. 
NAFAC Pacific announced nearly a billion dollars in new project awards on Thursday, mostly for Guam. The $990 million in multiple award construction contracts is funded by the government of Japan as part of the agreement to relocate Marines from Okinawa to Guam. The wide-ranging works includes barracks and dorms, dining facilities, ranges, educational facilities, roads and streets. Hensel Phelps Shimizu Joint Venture of Honolulu, Hawaii, is the first of seven companies being awarded the initial task order at $53.9 million for the construction of a base administration building on Marine Corps Base Camp Blas. Commanding Officer Cole, uh, Bradley McGrath said, quote, it will be the new... It will be the new command headquarters for Camp Blas, and we are very excited about this project and our progress, unquote. It is expected to be completed by May 2023. Coming up, more primetime news. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM. Your community calendars brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. Enjoy Honey Sesame Chicken Breast at Panda Express. Be the sweetness. Be the freshness. Be the crispy, tender sesame seed perfection. That's how you find your sweet spot. Have it delivered from Panda Express today. Agania Shopping Center. We get it. Living to the fullest is tough during COVID-19. You don't need to do it alone, and everyone needs a hand right now. We are here. Feeling overwhelmed? Call 647-8833 and let's talk. Mangegiham is a project of Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center. Welcome back. There's a very worthwhile construction boot camp you should check out, which seeks to empower you with opportuni opportunity during what are expected to be some very tough times ahead. Here's more. Chris, I just wanted to um, share some information. We have uh, an upcoming construction boot camp. Um, we're looking to fill some available slots, and um, we're um, hoping that recent graduates from Guam uh, high school class of 2019 and 2020 will give us a call so we can um, uh, potentially offer an opportunity uh, in the construction um, industry. And so um, um, some of our participants, uh, the participants that are selected will uh, receive some interpersonal skills training um, to allow them to become uh, workplace uh, ready. Um, we're also offering uh, an OSHA 10 safety um, course and some um, basic uh, first aid and CPR. In addition, uh, students are going to be um, immersed in traditional construction disciplines like carpentry, welding, electrical, and HVAC. And so we're looking for um, students that are interested or passionate about uh, pursuing this great opportunity. And so um, the format that we're offering this training, some of it will be face-to-face -face online and of course, um, um, uh, some learning labs and a live lab uh, situation. And so our employer partner is of course, Black Construction and uh, GCC has been running some of these uh, boot camps um, to do some um, um, 
training so that they eventually can earn some credentials and eventually uh, that'll lead into um, a career in construction. And so um, I've been uh, speaking with many parents and um, we're just asking for family or friends to share this information and um, you know, send folks our way. Um, I can be reached uh, by phone at 735-5516. I can also be reached by email at workforce at guamcc.edu. And so um, I, I truly appreciate the time um, that you're giving us to share this with our community so that we can um, um, work together so that we can help build capacity on Guam. Oh no, they're not going. We're gonna ask you like six tough questions. Sure. Now, Bonnie, uh, so obviously we, we are uh, seeing some shortages uh, with uh, construction um, personnel. How uh, crucial is this construction boot camp going to be uh, when it comes to filling those needs? Okay, so uh, participants that complete this training, um, some or all may actually be offered an employment opportunity with Black Construction. And for those uh, remaining, um, we will work with our additional um, partners in construction so that we can place these individuals as well. So this is a 12 week training cycle. Uh, the classes, the instruction, it's all at GCC or at Black Construction? Uh, well, it will be a mix. So we will have some, uh, the face-to-face -face training will be here at GCC, but there will be lab opportunities in which they can go out um, to uh, the actual construction sites and um, just get a real feel and experience of, of what they can expect when they become employed in construction. Don't go anywhere. Birthday shout outs when we return. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. We get it. Living to the fullest is tough during COVID-19. You don't need to do it alone, and everyone needs a hand right now. We are here. Feeling overwhelmed? Call 647-8833 and let's talk. Mangegiham is a project of Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday on this January 8th to Sazzy Quintanita, who celebrates birthday number 13 today. You are getting all the love in the world from Nina Nelly and Nina Maria. Gavin Ekpadi celebrates birthday number nine today, and we love you forever and ever, Gabby. Say mom, dad, Lana, Kay, Din, Zay, Sonia, and Emberly. Wyatt Babalta celebrates a birthday today, and congratulations and all love in the world from Daddy and Auntie Tam, as well as Mommy and Daddy Mike, and from your Babalta, Rios, Regis, and Tahazi Familias. And happy birthday number 44 to Patrick Tidigui, who blows out the candles today. Your family and friends are sending you all of their love. And belated birthday wishes going out tonight to TJ Uggen, who was born on January the 6th. To our bull boy, who lights up our lives and makes every day an adventure. They say, we love you so much. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online at KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo, your name, and birthday. And it's that time of the week where we announce the winner of a yummy Cold Stone Creamery birthday cake. Allow me to introduce you, viewing audience, and say congratulations to this week's winner, Lincoln Sauce, who was born on January the 3rd. Lincoln, you and your family are the new owners of a Cold Stone Creamery ice cream cake, which we will be in touch with you very, very soon to let you know how you can pick it up. Congratulations. One That's going to do it for us here on Primetime. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Good night.